Well, hello and welcome to um, a little bit of coding for our qualitative preparation for our assignments and our dissertations. So um, what I'm going to do is talk you through a little bit about how this coding works and what it looks like and what you have to do before you begin coding. Um, so I pulled up a transcript for a study that I actually did here in the spring and um, this is the transcript for my first participant. But before we go through how I did the um, coding part and what I did with the transcript, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what this study was and who the participants were and those sorts of things. So this was a study about the transition to online learning for students. So um, you know, every study has a research question. So the research question for this study was what were the lived experiences of students during the COVID-19 pandemic when learning um, went virtual? And I'm sure the wording was a little bit different, but I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. But we were really examining what was it like for the kids, right? So that lived experience. Typically, a lived experience is a um, phenomenology. So essentially, that's the methodology that we were using. When I say we, I had um, two co-researchers in this study. It was mixed methods, but we're just looking at the qualitative portion. Um, and for the qualitative portion, we had... Um, sampling, a purposeful sampling of 12 undergraduate students. So in qualitative research, when we choose our participants, we talk about the selection criteria. And it was very simple. They had to be an undergraduate student, a traditional undergraduate student. So typically between 18 and 23 years old, who actually went directly from high school into college. If they took a gap year, that was fine. We still considered them a traditional college student. What we did not want was adult students who were struggling with additional pressures um, at home. So that's what we were looking for. Um, their major did not matter. So that did not hinder the student from being involved. And um, they had to attend a university that went um, virtual. Well, that was easy to find because all universities did that in the U.S. So um, the purposeful sample, we came up with about six students. And then beyond that, we used snowball sampling. So they would then tell us about a friend who also went virtual. So when it was all said and done, we had 12 participants um, who were traditional undergrad students who attended both small and large private universities and public universities. All participants were sophomores, juniors, or seniors. I should say rising sophomores, juniors, or seniors, because if you look at the date of this transcript, um, we did this in May, so after grades were posted. So one of the things we were able to do is interview our own students if they so desired, because grades had already been posted. Um, so that's an important part of the IRB process, right? So we didn't have authority over them in any way. All the interviews were virtual. They were all recorded in Google Hangouts. After we recorded them, we transcribed them, we took notes, we analyzed them, and then we did inter-coder agreement, which is having two researchers look at the transcript separately and then coming together um, to look at the data together. Um, from all the codes, we eventually then reduced it to six themes, which we'll talk about later. But let's get into the coding process. So you'll notice the setup. We don't use names, right? So I typically don't give pseudonyms. I will just use participant one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Um, always put a timestamp on it in your dissertation or in any study that you do. You're going to have to explain how long the interviews were. So these interviews total, if you look at all 12 of them, were between 45 minutes to an hour. And I think one lasted an hour and 15 minutes. But the average was between 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Um, and then the date, you know, you want to make sure you have the date on there. So we just transcribed it word for word, right, went back to that, um, went back to that recording and set it up this way. Now, I have interviewer participant. Um, you're going to notice one that you do in class. It just says question answer. There's no right or wrong. Also, I did not leave margins. 
um, because I'm coding this electronically. The one that you are going to work on in class will probably have margins. I'm pretty sure that one has margins um, because typically we do it by hand in class, but you're going to be able to do that electronically um, when we do some group work with coding. But you just go through it. So what I tend to do um, is do my coding line by line. So that is um, very indicative of a kind of a grounded theory type of coding, although we use it in other methodologies. But line by line for me just works the best. And when I do that, I typically will highlight things and then assign a code to it. So whether that's one word, a phrase, it, you know, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. It's really a personal preference. So you'll notice what I did. So the interviewer asks, tell me about your general impressions of the past semester. Very open-ended. We want the participant to just let it flow and, and see where it goes. And um, so that was the first question on the interview protocol. So the participant said it wasn't horrible. I think it caught us all off guard, the teachers and the students. So one of the ways I coded this was I just went to this area, hit the review and put new comment, right? And then I put shocked, fresh, shock, frustrated. Um, so that's how I do it is I do it actually in the track changes. So off guard, the teachers and students, all of the kids, were frustrated because of the fields. So I highlighted frustrated and I actually then use that term frustrated. And the reason I highlighted it is because I was, I just later want to go back and say, hey, look, I want to make sure that I'm looking at why they were frustrated. In this case, she was frustrated because the fields were canceled and everything changing was hard. Again, feeling frustrated. And that's just how I'm coding it. I can use the terminology or the verbiage of the participant, but I can assign it something else if I like. I tried to think about it from the perspective of the professors and having kids stuck at home. So kind of like, hey, I know we had it bad, but I'm thinking of the other adults in my life. So I put here and I highlighted this because I wanted to make sure that I um, paid attention to her whole comment is I called that empathy, right? So thinking of others. Um, I went home to four people working and going to school online. That was hard to get used to, to be honest. So she says, you're going to notice throughout this transcript, she does say hard a lot, like things are hard, things are hard. And I'm just assigning the word difficult as the code to that. I mean, it's not real deep, right? So then she stopped. So the second question on the interview protocol, you know, the interviewer is giving her some feedback. I bet that was difficult. The second question was, what did online learning lo look like for you? So the participant says, some professors had class and some just posted stuff in Blackboard. I love when they say stuff. Learning just from Blackboard is super hard for me, right? So super difficult. So I'm assigning difficult to that again. I really looked forward to having a live class because I have to listen to the professor. So I feel like at this point, um, you know, she was a little bit frustrated, right? So that's how I assigned that frustrated, sorry, um, and have to listen to the professor. And I, and I like to learn that way. So in, at this point, um, you know, she's feeling frustrated. She's feeling a little bit maybe disappointed. So I could actually, you know, put two codes to that, feeling disappointed. And then she talks about the way that she learns. So I, for the sake, for the, you know, lack of a better term, I assign the word learning style to that because she's being really reflective on, you know what, this is not the way I learn best. I was probably struggling a little bit. Um, and, and it's good, right? So she has the ability to look inward when it comes to that. Some teachers asked if we wanted live class and some kids and some kids did and some kids didn't. So I was stuck in the middle. She talks about being stuck in the middle. Um, oh, here we go. I am so sorry. So she was stuck in the middle. So again, um, I, I assigned learning style ugh, and frustrated 
to that. So again, feeling a little bit of both of those things. Um, sign language was helpful. We had some classes online. Sign language was helpful to have online. I could watch, let me pull down for you, and mimic the teacher. So again, you know, that is her learning style. That was helpful for her. Um, I'm going to put learning S so I don't waste more time. One class had a giant list of assignments. Like the teacher added stuff that wasn't on the syllabus before. That made us mad, right? Again, feeling frustrated with, I think, the disconnect between the teaching style and her learning style. Like that kind of just wasn't working for her. I also enjoyed having some guest speakers to mix it up a bit. My biggest complaint in some classes is that what was expected when we went online was way more than if we were in class. Again, feelings of frustration, right? So this is what, this is how I am interpreting it. So you may interpret this differently. For example, for one class, we have five, we have five YouTube video reflections, which there is no way we would have to do in class. It was 100% busy work, in my opinion. Well, again, I'm going to assign the word frustrated to her, her comment there. I get they wanted to fill in the gap, but we are home now and they have to take into consideration and take that into consideration. So this whole, you know, comment here, I think deserves um, some attention. And how I coded that was I said she felt overwhelmed, right? And then I think she wanted to be heard wanted to be heard. So, um, oh, so sorry. So that was how I coded that one. Again, sometimes it's one word, sometimes it is a phrase. That is, it's up to the researcher. I mean, that's the great part about qualitative is that you have that freedom and it is an interpretive act, right? You are interpreting what you're reading and everyone may interpret that differently or um, may have some different nuances in that interpretation. So the next question on the interview protocol, um, when you first heard that classes were moving from on ground to online, what were your thoughts? And the participant said, when I heard we were first going online, I was like, oh crap, I have to go home. And it, when I read this, I immediately thought like, ah, oh, she's in a panic. So that's how I coded it. I was at my dad's 24 seven because my mom didn't want me there because she and her husband are essential workers. Initially, and I didn't code anything there. Could I have? Absolutely, but I decided not to do that. Initially, we were allowed to stay on campus. I was thinking at my house, all the kids will be there. And I could hear not only um, in her words, but also in her intonation, that panic, like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? So that's another piece of it. You know, what's great about one-on-one -on -one face to face interviews, and in this case, it was Google Hangout, is, you know, in the audio, you hear the intonation, but face to face, you can, you can read the body language, you can look at the facial expressions, and absolutely, since qualitative is an interpretive act, you can use that to help with your interpretation. We wouldn't do that in quantitative. So she goes on to say, I have younger siblings. It is very hard. So she said hard again. And I think earlier I coded that as difficult. Um, so I'm going to do that same code there. I was really hoping to work. I have OCD and I need to be organized. And some of my coursework was way too much. So there was a lot there. I have OCD and I need to be organized. Um, again, and some of the coursework was too much, right? So an, another, some of this coursework is difficult. And I also thought about, you know, this juggling act that she's trying to do, right? Like she's dealing with the OCD. She's trying to be at home. This coursework, it's too much. Some people are giving too much or they, in their, in her opinion, maybe busy work. Um, it was 100% overwhelming. And there she says there, 
she says overwhelming so I'm gonna use that word I think I've used it earlier